how it goes. Um, okay, I'm going to start with, I think, what is uh, this week's uh, worst kept secret, um, that today the Secretary General and the Director General of the Food and Agricultural Organization, Ku dong Hyu, have appointed Cindy McCain of the United States as the Executive Director of the World Food Program. She will succeed David Beasley of the United States, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for his important contribution and service to the World Food Program. As you may know, Cindy McCain brings several years of experience, including being a champion for human rights and has a long history of giving a voice to the voiceless through her humanitarian and philanthropic work. She is currently United States Ambassador to the UN Agencies for Food and Agriculture in Rome. More information online. Um, and keeping with senior personnel um, appointments, I wanted to f uh, read into the record that yesterday <laughs> afternoon, um, the Secretary General appointed Maria Isabel Salvador of Ecuador as his special representative for Haiti and head of the UN Integrated Office in Haiti. She is succeeding Helen Lalim of the United States, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for her important contribution and service to Haiti. Ms. Salvador brings to this position over 25 years of experience at the managerial, um, advisory, political, and diplomatic functions. In the private sector, she served 10 years as the general manager and legal representative for Air France in Ecuador. She is currently the director uh, of external relations at the Universidad de las Américas in Ecuador, a post she has held since 2015. Uh, much more information online. Uh, today, um, in Iraq, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, visited the Jeddah Rehabilitation Center in Nineveh province in the northern part of the country. He heard from the center's residents, many of whom are women and children who have been repatriated from Syria's al hol camp. Speaking to journalists outside the center, the Secretary General expressed support for Iraq's efforts to repatriate and reintegrate Iraqi citizens from al hol camp in Syria. Iraq's efforts are an example uh, to people of the world, she said. Iraq is demonstrating that responsible repatriations are possible by finding dignified solutions anchored in the principle of both accountability and reintegration. Nearly half of al hols population is under 12. They are deprived of their rights, he said, and the uh, Secretary General also underscored that they deserve a path out. This is a matter of human decency and compassion and a matter of security, he said, adding that the longer we let this untenable situation fester, the more resentment and despair will grow and the greater risks to stability and security. From the camp, the Secretary General also sent a message to all member states with nationals who are in al hol camp and elsewhere. He said it is time for them to significantly step up their efforts to facilitate the safe and dignified repatriation of their nationals in line with applicable international law and guided by the best interest of children. And moments ago, he had a brief a press encounter with the media in Erbil, uh, where he emphasized that the need for unity and constant dialogue among all Iraqis to achieve progress. Uh, the Secretary General also met with various Kurdistan region officials, including President Barzani and Prime Minister uh, Barzani. Uh, and tonight he'll be heading to Doha, uh, late tonight heading to Doha, where he'll attend the fifth conference of the least developed countries. Um, our Deputy Secretary General uh, is in Niger for the final, uh, final day of her visit. Today, she visited an innovation fair organized by the Economic Commission of Africa in collaboration with the International Telecommunications Union, UN Women, and other partners. The fair took place on the sidelines of the Ninth African Region Forum on Sustainable Development that took place in Niamey, the capital of Niger. During the tour, Ms. Mohammed was briefed about the hackathon on climate change, adaptation, and coding camp for connected African girls. At the camp, more than 100 girls from Niger showcased practical solutions to a range of issues from health care, climate change, violence against women, and job creation within the context of Africa's 
expanding and integrating economy. The visit was followed by an award ceremony where Ms. Mohammed emphasized the catalytic role that digital technologies can play in bringing transformational changes if they can leverage the participation of women and girls as digital innov innovators and actors for change. Uh, to conclude her visit, she met with various influential women in the country who are advancing women's agenda to stop gender-based violence, promote inclusion of women in mediation and peace building, and increase women's participation in the political process, entrepreneurship, and other areas. Ms. Mohammed commended the women for acting as agents of change and urged them to come together to fight violence against women, especially at the community level. Uh, while there, she also visited students in um, a primary school to highlight the importance of transforming education. During her meetings with President Bazoum and Prime Minister Mahmoudou, she discussed the development challenges, um, uh, development tr strides in Niger in her uh, meetings with res UN resident coordinators from all over the African continent. She urged them to continue their efforts and engagement in the lead up to the SDG uh, summit. Um, moving on to the aftermath of the, um, of the earthquake, this in Turkey, Alvaro Rodriguez, the resident and humanitarian coordinator for Turkey, was in the town of Hatay today, a city almost completely wiped out by the quake. He visited a camp and a field hospital and met with communities impacted by earthquakes. He also met with government officials and emergency responders. We and our partners have been providing aid, including shelter, food, hot meals, and medical assistance, water sanitation services, and psychosocial support. We also had uh, have nine emergency medical teams in Hatay and others Another will be established soon. Each team treats about 150, 200 people, including performing um, surgeries. More than 60 urban search and rescue teams, make, uh, many coordinated by the UN, have come to Hate and rescued more than 100 people from under the rubble. Today, uh, 35 truckloads of aid from the World Food Program, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Health Organization, UN Refugee agency crossed into northwest Syria from southern Turkey. In total, 535 trucks have crossed since February 9th. Humanitarian partners continue to provide assistance across impacted areas, including family food baskets, hot meals, medical supplies, hygiene kits, tents, blankets, mattresses, and winter clothes. Our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the availability of basic commodities in local markets and rising costs continue to pose a challenge. Winterization and shelter items remain a priority for aid efforts. Um, we also have an update from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Following deterioration of the security situation in Ituri in the east, our peacekeeping mission, MONUSCO, has conducted uh, two missions, uh, two patrols in uh, communities of Kato uh, Katoto, which is about 18 kilometers northeast of Bunya, and in Solenyama, about nine kilometers north of Bunya. While there, our colleagues engage with representatives of communities, discuss security concerns, including suspension of traffic on an important road that was attacked by the Kodeko armed group. The mission also dispatched a patrol to two sites hosting internally displaced people in Jugu, following reports of clashes between the Zaire and Kodeko militias that took place separately earlier this week. Peacekeepers also conducted a mission um, to Ro, which is south of Jugu, to facilitate the opening of 28 voter registration centers. The mission also intends to intensify patrolling there at the request of the Independent National Electoral Commission. And in South Sudan, um, the UN mission there, UNMIS, today welcomed the transitional government's renewed commitment to fully implementing all outstanding benchmarks contained within the revitalized, revitalized peace agreement. This took place at a meeting of the Revitalized Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, attended by the government, partners, and stakeholders. Speaking of the forum, the Deputy Special Representative, Guang Kong, emphasized the need to begin the delayed phase, second phase of the graduation of the necessary unified forces, as well as the constitution-making process. He pointed to the need to allow for the reconstruction, reconstitution of the Natural Election Commission and other indispensable bodies that are essential for a free, fair, peaceful, and inclusive process. 
Lastly, uh, almost lastly, the International Support Group for Lebanon, which brings together, as you know, the UN and key nations and regional groups, said today it is gravely concerned about the ramification of a prolonged presidential vacuum as the presidency, presidential vacancy enters its fifth month in Lebanon. The group urged the political leadership and members of parliament to assume their responsibilities, act in line with the Constitution, uphold the Taif agreements by electing a new president without delay. In addition, the group strongly condemned the violent attacks against the UNIFIL convoy, which, as you know, killed a peacekeeper, uh, Private Sean Rooney, and they said they expect the perpetrators to be brought to justice. And our colleagues in Costa Rica, led by the resident coordinator Allegra Bayocchi, uh, announced this uh, week that the country will be the first in Central America to have a national artificial intelligence strategy. That is done in partnership with our team on the ground. The government reached an agreement with UNESCO to develop the strategy with an ethical approach to artificial intelligence, promoting innovation that fosters sustainable development and human rights. The team continues to support the country's efforts to combat hate speech through artificial intelligence, a partnership that led Costa Rica to launch the region's first national plan to combat hate speech. As part of their joint work, also using AI, the team launched three major investigations on hate speech, discrimination against women, xenophobia, working with civil society, private sector, and authorities to help identify trends. Tomorrow, uh, this still being the beginning of the month, we will have our good friend uh, Maximo Torero, who will talk from the Food and Agriculture Organization to talk to you about the price of food. Uh, okay, uh, let's see if you can do better with this one. Um, 63 member states have now given money the regular budget. The four latest payments come from countries that all have UNESCO heritage sites, while one is still tentative. And as far as we can gather, all these, all these member states export bananas. Honduras. Guadeloupe is not a member state of the United Nations. Honduras is not on the list. You're all, okay, let's uh, Burundi, Lebanon, Micronesia, and Namibia. At least one. Okay. I hope so, because if, otherwise I, I'm sure I will be corrected. Uh, speaking of bananas, Edie. <laughs> I eat one every day. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Steph. Um, first of all, on the Secretary General, um, is, is he... Uh, returning to New York, or is he making any other stops uh, while he's uh, in the Middle East? No, I mean, he's going straight from uh, Iraq to, uh, to Doha. He and is. then he's expected back in New York uh, next week, as far as I know. And next week is the Commission on the Status of Women. Indeed. Um, are we going to get any briefing here on uh, on what's, gonna what's going to be happening? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to be briefed on what's going on in general. Uh, we'll see what we can. Uh, no. We'll talk to our colleagues at UN Women. I'm, I'm I'm asking because a lot of us have gotten inundated with side events. Yeah, understood. Okay, uh, Madame, and then Mr. Deji. Uh, you know about the letter that was sent for Mali. What I would like to ask him for the French not to be the plume. Did it happen before? Because I don't recall that. I, I don't know, uh, frankly. Um, but that's a question to ask for to Security Council historians. Okay. And um, in DRC... When will the UN or the Security Council name Rwanda as the aggressor and Uganda also, but Rwanda mainly? Do you know? I, I, I can't speak for the Security Council. I can tell you that uh, we report uh, in the best possible way, in the most direct way, uh, what is going on in the eastern part of the DRC. It is very important uh, that all of the regional member states in the region uh, 
implement uh, the, the agreements and the understandings that have been agreed to, whether they be in, uh, in Luanda or in, or in Nairobi and, and other places. Deji. Uh, several questions on the Ukraine-Russian crisis. Uh, today, it's been reported that uh, the Russian territory, Bryansk, uh, Bryansk has been attacked. The uh, Moscow accused Ukrainian saboteurs uh, opened fire against civilians that caused t deaths of two people, yet uh, Kiev denied this. Uh, does the Secretary General has, have anything to say on this incident? In the allegations and the comments both uh, from Russian authorities, from the Ukrainian authorities, we're not in a position to verify any of the in, uh, of that information, so I really can't f comment further on it at this point. So uh, about the Zaporizhia uh, nuclear power plant rotation of the IAEA and UN personnel there, mm -hmm. uh, just want to ask, is there any contact between the UN or the IAEA with the, the, uh, both you know, Ukrainian and Russian authorities to establish that safe zone, maybe that raised six, five months at least? Yeah, I mean, the, the I think, as you know, the director general of the IEA has been uh, both, I think, in, in both has been traveling to Moscow, to Ukraine, uh, and remains uh, active on that, uh, on that matter. And it continues, the fighting, especially around uh, areas where there are nuclear power plants, continue to be of concern to us. But there's no development. I, I mean, nothing, there's no, the development is that the discussions are ongoing. The other day I asked you about the Black Sea Green Initiative. I said it will be automatically extend uh, if, yeah, yeah, if yeah. No, no objection. Yep. Um, but it seems like you said there's still discrete diplomacy there, which means maybe a party has already raised concern on that. There are a lot of public comments being made uh, from different parties uh, on this. I can tell you our aim is to see this grain initiative continue, uh, and we are in touch with all the relevant parties on that end. But I, I'm not going, despite the, the high level of interest, uh, and understandably so, uh, by you and, and others, I'm just not going to go into any uh, detail at this but point. I mean, I mean, so so as I understand, so far there's no official. Um, what what would what would that be? The word be objection, not objection, but concern over the 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 the, the text itself. The text was signed. Yeah. You know, was signed yeah, know. by. Yeah. Uh, but if the, you the, the the Russians, would, the, the Turks, and, and and the Secretary General was there as a as a witness. Yeah. Uh, so so far, so far, no, no official objection or or, or raised concern. I, I, like we want. I, to I think you 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 as well as I read read what is being said and hear what is being said. But I'm I'm um, I'm not going to conduct uh, or l let alone comment on whatever discussions may be taking place at this point. Because th the important thing for us right now is to see this. Uh, continue, the Grain Initiative continue, uh, to see our efforts at getting Russian grain and fertilizer in greater number out to market uh, bear fruit, uh, and we will continue in that vein, because it is important uh, not only to the parties involved, but it is, as Maximo will probably tell you tomorrow, it is important uh, for the global food security. Okay, Alan? Thanks so much, Stefan. I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, the follow-up on Deji's questions, actually, uh, regarding the incident in Russia, which is defined by Russian authorities as a terrorist attack uh, conducted by the Ukrainian uh, sabotage group. Uh, do you, uh, aren't you afraid that this incident might close, I mean, might eliminate all the opportunities for the dialogue between, between Moscow and Kiev? Uh, the first one. Th there's been... There is an open conflict between Russia and, and Ukraine. That has been going on now in this phase for, for, for a year. Uh, what we want to see uh, in the end is a just peace between the two countries based on international, based on, uh, on the charter. I have no specific information on the incident that, that is being commented on right now from both, uh, both capitals, so I, I don't have any comment uh, 
to make. Uh, but it's, as we've said here repeatedly, we do not want to see any escalation, further escalation, of this, uh, of this conflict. And a second question is regarding the uh, tra tragic crash of the train in, in Greece. Uh, I wonder if uh, the UN is somehow involved and are you ready to provide any assistance? Well, uh, right now, our thoughts are with all the families of the people who were affected by the tragic uh, train incident that took place Tuesday in Greece. We wish a swift and full recovery to all of the people injured, and we send our deepest condolences to all the the families, to the people, and to the government of Greece. Uh, we are currently not involved, but of course, as in any tragic situation, we remain at the disposal of uh, the government of Greece should uh, they need our assistance. Stefano, and then we'll go to Beno. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, is um, a follow-up on, um, on a possible peace between Ukraine and Russia. Um, I remember the, just a few months ago, um, the foreign minister of um, Ukraine had said that they saw a role, and also the President Zelensky, they saw a role of the UN and the uh, Secretary of State. Um, then, you know, there was this vote on the resolution on uh, uh, last week. And my question is, what is exactly, what could be exactly the role of uh, the Secretary General in this, because uh, just a few days ago, the, the well, Russian- the Secretary General in what exactly? Huh? In what? In, a, in starting a peace uh, conversation between the two countries, because uh, we have been hearing that, that this is not happening because uh, uh, there are obstacles, that can, there are other, some of these say that is the United States, some of these say that is Russia, but they are yeah, not I, I think starting- we've, we, we've had, I mean, I, I, this is a question that I seem to be answering on, on, a, on a regular basis. We, of course, want to see an end to this war in the terms that I just outlined to, uh, to Alan. Um, the Secretary General has repeatedly said publicly in, in front of you that should he be asked by both parties for his good officers, they are available. And this is for any conflict that is going on anywhere in the world. In the meantime, we have the Secretary General has done what he can, where he can. The Black Sea Grain Initiative being a very important part of that, right? Where the two parties are sitting across from each other in a conference room in Istanbul, almost on a daily basis, with our Turkish uh, friends and with the uh, obviously representatives of the Secretary General. Stefan, through, the you like through, through the Secretary General's mm -hmm. efforts, uh, we were able to um, uh, to get. Uh, the, the Russians and the, the Ukrainians to allow for the uh, safe evacuation of civilians out of the Azovstal plant. So wherever he can and wherever there's agreement from both parties for his role, he is there. Uh, it seems that at the beginning, the Russian didn't trust the Secretary General because on the beginning of the crisis of the war, the Secretary General said that Russia was breaking the chart and so on. But then lately, that's what I was finishing with my question, a few days ago, in the Security Council, the Russian ambassador, they were talking about the, uh, the pipe, the gas pipe investigation, but they say, we trust Secretary General. So the Ukrainians saying that they trust Guterres, now the Russians saying that they trust Guterres. Shouldn't Guterres have a, a finally a bigger role that maybe couldn't have it before, but now is the it, time? It is, I think the, the, the he has a role where he can, and when he has had a role, he has moved the process forward. Uh, the Secretary General, I think, has had uh, the trust, frankly, of, 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 of both parties, um, and he has been very consistent in what he's been saying about this conflict from day one, and he says the same thing in New York as he does in Kiev, as he does in Moscow. Beno. Thank you, Steph. So the Intergovernmental Conference on Marine Biodiversity of Areas Beyond National Jurisdiction is, have, is uh, meeting here mm -hmm. right now in this building. There seems a possibility for a deal, but it's still quite open. Is, uh, are you, um, as the hosts, uh, in any talks about a possible extension of this conference? Uh, we would have to check tomorrow? with the, it's, it, that would be up to the, the, the presidency, not, not us as the secretariat. Uh, but the disc, 
I, I, uh, I can't answer that, right? Because the discussions are, are going on. What I would refer you to the message delivered by the legal counsel on behalf of the Secretary General yesterday that we've, we very much, uh, for the reasons outlined, hope and, and, and want to see a successful outcome uh, to these talks. The stakes are, the stakes are high on a, on a planetary level. In, if in a sense. the countries need more time, uh, technically, could I mean, you let, provide? Let, let, let me just say, the that resources? If, if if more time is needed, not, there will not be an obstacle from the secretariat, right? So, but again, that's a question to ask the presidency. Uh, let's go online. Um, we'll go to Yoshita and then Abdel Hamid, please. Thank you, uh, Stefan. Uh, a couple of questions on the G20 foreign ministers meeting uh, in uh, Delhi. Uh, there was no joint communique after the meeting due to differences on the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, Secretary Blinken told a press conference that Russia and China were the two nations that blocked the joint consensus. Uh, what does the Secretary General make uh, of uh, this uh, development? And I have a second question again on the G20. Uh, well, we, we are not a party to uh, to, to, to the meeting. Uh, I, I think this is obviously not a in no way a reflection on the on on the hosts and on the efforts of uh, of of India uh, as hosts of the G, of the G20. Um, it's not for since we're not at the table, it's not for us to proportion uh, blame and to, to analyze where the, the issue may be. It is yet, however, another reflection of the divisions we see in, multi, in, in a number of international fora. And uh, a follow-up, uh, for the first time since the Ukraine conflict, uh, Secretary Blinken uh, and uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov met very briefly face-to-face -face on the sidelines of the G20 uh, meeting. Secretary Blinken uh, uh, demanded that Russia end its war of aggression uh, against Ukraine. Um, again, what does the Secretary General make of all these developments coming out of New Delhi uh, well, uh, on a very significant You know, on, on, on one hand, we didn't see an agreement. On the other hand, uh, a joint agreement on a joint statement. On the other hand, any opportunity uh, for direct dialogue between the Russian Federation and the U.S. is to be welcome. But I, I have no more insight of what was said or not said than, than you do, uh, but we always believe direct discussions and face-to-face -face discussions are best. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Um, thank you, Stefan. I think you heard of the statement issued by the Israeli finance minister, Smotrich, when he said that he would like to see the town of Hawara wiped out from the face of Earth, and he asked the Israeli government to do it. This statement uh, received so much condemnation, including the State Department of the U.S., which called it uh, irresponsible and disgusting. However, the U.N. Um, representative in occupied Palestine, Mr. Winsland, so far did not say anything. Do you have any statement on I mean, that? What, what, what I can tell you from, from our point of view, uh, the statement that was made uh, by Minister Smorich is provocative, it's inflammatory, and statements like these are just unacceptable. And I think coming on top of that, coming from a government official, it's irresponsible. Um, the statement is also, of course, inconsistent with any resolution, that, any UN resolution. Uh, once again, the Secretary General reiterates his call for all sides to refrain from incitement, inflammatory rhetoric, and all acts of provocation, particularly uh, amid these current tensions and spiraling violence. Deji. Thank you. Uh, just now you mentioned about hate, hate speech. Mm -hmm. um, two days ago, Representative Mike Gallagher of the United States said, and I quote, Though we call it a strategic competition, it's not a polite tennis match when talking about China and U.S. This is an existential struggle over what type of world we want to live in. Do we want to live in an Aureli Orwellian world of total, total totalitarian techno control? Do you consider this a hate speech, or do you think, do you think public figures could incite hate speech like this? Well, uh, I think, uh, let me take a step back, and uh, the, the growing divide uh, between China and the U.S. is something that the sec is 
Secretary General has been very concerned about, that he's spoken about very publicly, that the world's two largest economies uh, are tied together, right? And uh, the world cannot afford an uncoupling of these two uh, economies, let alone on the security front. Um, there needs to be dialogue between China and the U.S. on a number of issues, including, and I would say especially on the issue of climate change. And we would hope that uh, all leaders from all sides work towards uh, avoiding uh, an uncoupl uncoupling, avoiding uh, growing tensions uh, between two such uh, large countries. So these these words are not helpful for that? I, I think I've answered your question. I will leave it to an analyst such as yourself to uh, do, uh, as we would say in French, an explication de texte. Okay, um, speaking of explication de texte, Ms. Kubiak, you're up. Uh, Fahan will be here tomorrow. I will see you Friday. No, I will see you Monday. I'm taking a mental health break from all you people.